Hey guys, all my content in this is taken from 21 Century 21 Accounting Textbook by Cengage. I um, recently paused my part one video and now I'm starting part two for the last few sections in this. So we've already discussed what a, um, that we have special journals. In bigger companies, we have special journals. So we discussed about a purchases journal. That's usually any purchase that's made on account. Then we talked about cash payment. So that's any kind of cash payment that we're giving out. That we've made a cash payment, we've paid it, and we can record it in this journal. Purchases is any purchase we're making for ourselves. Sales is any sale that we make. So now we can start organizing our transactions into these special journals and it makes um, our books a little more easy to follow. And so the next special journal is called a sales journal, okay? We no longer are looking at that sole proprietorship who only has one journal called the general journal. We have this multi-million dollar company that we need to break things down. And so this one is going to be the sales journal. Sales journal is exactly what it states. It's a special journal used to record any sales of merchandise on account. Now this is the sale of merchandise on account. Not um, cash sales, just a sale of merchandise on account. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. We have the date, we have the account debited, which is whatever the accounts receivable was. We have a post-reference sales number, sales credit, and a sales tax payable credit. So these are already listed in there for us, which makes our journaling a little bit easier. So down below, we're going to learn about a sales invoice, okay? Um, usually when a um, merchandise is sold on account, the seller will prepare an invoice document or an invoice to document the sale. So here it shows us the quantity, the item number, who's it to, who's it from, um, the invoice number, the date, terms to 10 net 30, meaning 2% discount within the 10 days of the invoice, or pay the full amount um, in 30 days. So this was for copy paper and light bulbs. We have the unit price and then we multiply 10 times 25 to get this. We get our subtotal, our tax, and then our total. So this is that um, sales invoice that we'll keep for our own records to say, hey, here's a sale that we made on account. And then it will also send one to the um, person that is going to owe us money. Okay, so we'll send it out to Wells Apartments, but we'll also keep one for ourselves for um, record purposes so that we can journalize whatever is needed. Finally, let's look how to journalize something in a sales journal. So the journal entry says, on November 4th, we sold merchandise on account to Wells Apartments. $454.50 plus sales tax, which is the 2727. The total was $481.77. So we go ahead and we always write the date first. Who is it to? We sold merchandise on account to Wells Apartments. So they owe us money. We sold Wells Apartments. Okay, what's the sale number? 498. Okay, accounts receivable debited. We debit for the full total. They owe us $481.77. Well, only $454.50 of that is our sale. That's our sales credit. The rest is sales tax payable. So for the purposes of this textbook, they use 6%. So we take the price of the good, times it by 6%. You can either put that in your calculator as 6 and then hit the percent button, or you can write 0 0.06, and you get 2727. So that's where they got the total, 481.77. Take the price of the good, press the sales tax, and you get the total amount. This sales tax payable is recorded in our book, so we know how much we owe the state. This is the sale amount, and that's how much the company owes us. They pay the sales tax. We're making our full sale. Nothing, nothing's wrong for us. We say, hey, this is how much you owe us. It's not like we're losing money here or anything. Um, 
we get this money and then they have to pay the sales tax on top of it. All right, that finishes it up for the sales journal. Tune back in to the next video for the work together problem.